everyone! In today's video, we're going to discuss Eric Erikson's developmental theory. First, we'll quickly review what the developmental theory is, then we'll go over each of its eight stages. So let's jump right in! Eric Erikson was a German-born psychoanalyst that extended Freud's work on personality development across the lifespan. Erikson believed that the process of development is made up of eight distinct stages. In each stage, a person must complete a life task that is important to his or her well-being and mental health. This is also known as the psychosocial development theory because the theory focuses on psychological and social development of a human being's personality. His psychosocial theory is based on four major concepts. Stages of development, psychosocial crises, process of coping, and developmental goals or tasks which are tasks that must be completed in order to move on to the next stage of development. Completing these tasks will allow the person to achieve life's virtues. Hope, will, purpose, competence, fidelity, love, care, and wisdom. Erickson articulated that the achievement of these tasks are affected by the person's social environment. So each stage is characterized by a development crisis to be mastered. This crisis could be successfully or unsuccessfully resolved. Unsuccessful resolution at any stage of development may delay the progress, but mastery can still occur later on. So now, let's talk about each of the eight stages, starting with trust versus mistrust. The first stage of development, trust versus mistrust, is the stage of development for infants. Their virtue is hope, their task for development is to view the world as safe and reliable, and to view relationships as nurturing, stable, and dependable. In this stage, the infant learns to rely on their caregivers to meet their basic needs of warmth, food, comfort, and learns to form trust in others. If the infant receives inadequate care, inconsistent care, or care that is simply not safe, this can result in mistrust. Next is Erickson's developmental stage for toddlers, autonomy versus shame and doubt. The virtue for the toddler is will. Their developmental task is to achieve a sense of control and free will, hence the word autonomy. During this stage, the toddler begins to develop language and motor skills. They begin to learn from their environment and gain independence to feed, dress, and toilet themselves. This newfound independence will need encouragement from caregivers, so if the caregivers are too overprotective or have expectations for the child that are too high, he or she will feel shame and doubt instead of autonomy. Initiative versus guilt is the developmental stage for preschoolers. The preschooler's virtue is purpose. Their task is to develop a conscience and learn to manage conflict and anxiety. They begin to explore the how and why behind things. This explains why children four to six years old tend to ask why a lot. The reason this stage is called initiative versus guilt is because the preschooler is taking the initiative to learn and seek out new experiences. However, the child will experience guilt if they're reprimanded for trying to seek out those new experiences. And the child will be hesitant to advance. Okay, so now we are moving into school-age children. This stage is called industry versus inferiority. The virtue for the school-age child is competence. Their task for development is to emerge confidence in their own abilities and to take pleasure in their own accomplishments. The school-age child gains satisfaction from completing projects and receiving recognition for their accomplishments. This explains why children this age really enjoy sports and participating in competitions. School-age children are focused on learning useful skills, which will help them to develop positive self-esteem. If the child isn't accepted by their peers or they can't meet their parents' expectations, they'll feel inferior and develop a lack of self-worth. Next is identity versus role confusion. This is the developmental stage for adolescents. The virtue for this stage is fidelity. The task for this developmental stage is formulating a sense of self and belonging. It's a lot going on in this stage because the adolescent is transitioning from childhood to adulthood. They begin to go through many changes, including physical changes and hormonal changes, which leads to secondary sex characteristics and mood swings. 
At this age, the child is trying to establish their own identity. As a result, they may try on different roles, begin to rebel. The adolescent acquires a sense of self and decides which direction they want to take in life. If the adolescent is unable to establish an identity and a sense of direction, role confusion occurs instead. Intimacy versus isolation is the developmental stage of the young adult. The virtue for the young adult is love. Their task is to form loving and adult relationships and meaningful attachment to others. The young adult must establish personal relationships with friends and an intimate love relationship with one person. Difficulty meeting this task may result in the young adult feeling lonely and isolated. Let's discuss generativity versus stagnation in the middle-aged adult. The middle-aged adult's virtue is care. Their task is to achieve creativity, productivity, adjust to the needs of their aging parents, and establish the next generation. During the middle-aged adult years, involvement with family, friends, and the community is important. The middle-aged adult has a strong desire to contribute to society. And again, this is a stage in which a person is strongly concerned for the next generation. They have a need to nurture and guide younger people. If these tasks are not met, the person will become self-absorbed and obsessed with their own needs, stopping them from moving forward. He or she may also regress to earlier mechanisms of coping. In the last stage of Erickson's developmental theory is ego integrity versus despair in the older adult. Their virtue is wisdom and their task is to accept responsibility for oneself and life. This final stage is usually a period of reflection. Older adults like to look back on their lives and be proud of the contributions they made to society. If the older adult believes that he or she had a series of failures or misdirection, they may feel despair instead of integrity. Also, some older adults may not be fearful of dying if they feel as if they achieved integrity during this stage of life. This is why we like to encourage older adults to discuss their achievements in life. This is actually a type of therapy called reminiscence therapy. Though reminiscence therapy is often used in patients with mild to moderate dementia, it has great effect on older adults that don't have cognitive memory impairments. It's actually a way for older adults to relive and restructure their life experiences. Reminiscence about life events provides the older adult with a sense of fulfillment and purpose. So, encouraging reminiscence is important in our older adults, whether they be our patients or family members. Okay, ladies and gents, that brings this video about Erickson's psychosocial theory to an end. Please be sure to like, comment, share, and subscribe. Remember to never give up, and as always, thanks for watching.